Yankees enthusiast here. In the midst of Cedar Lake Camp, one of the New Jersey Y camps, I bring you another exclusive interview, this time with professional coach Herb Brown from the NBA. Former coach from the Detroit Pistons in the 70s to most recently the Charlotte Bobcats as the assistant head coach. We'll be sitting down with Herb in just a moment. So your first job in the NBA was with Detroit in the mid-70s. You took that job coming in with a terrible losing record. It was 17-25. And we see a lot of coaches, especially the NBA and the MLB, that come in to a team that's with a bad record. Was that especially difficult for you in that year? Yeah, I was the assistant coach. And then in the middle of the year, they fired the head coach. And it's difficult, but if you have good players, and if the players buy into what you're trying to show them or trying to teach them, then it, then it's a good situation. It's a difficult situation if the players don't buy in and, and they, they won't listen. Then it's a very hard thing for a guy to come in in the middle of the season and do something. And in your second season, um, you turned around your team. The Pistons finished six games over 500. And uh, you got into the first round of the playoffs. Um, and then the next season after that, you were fired after about 20 games. Did you leave on good terms with Detroit after about three seasons as head coach? Things. The first year when I took over, we also made the playoffs. And the first year we went by the first round. And it was, and it was the first time in the history that the Pistons had ever done that. The second year, we did have a good season, but we lost. We lost in the playoffs, and uh, Bob Lanier had missed 20 of those games. Our best player had missed 20 of those games, but we lost in the playoffs. The third year, I think I coached 24 games. I think we were 9-15, and 15, and I got fired. And the general manager was a new general manager, and I got fired. It's a difficult situation. You never expect it, and the team did not make the playoffs. But that was no consolation to me because I didn't have a job. Now, um, besides coaching in the NBA, you coached in college in Long Island, um, where I'm from, uh, in other leagues in America and also overseas. Um, did you feel it was your time? When did you feel it was time to leave college, go to the NBA? Well, I got very. I was very fortunate. I coached college for 14 years, and uh, I co my last two years at CW Post, I was the head co uh, head co basketball coach, and I had been the head basketball coach five years prior to that. Uh, for those fi five years prior to that, at Stony Brook, and I just got an opportunity to to coach an American team overseas. Only American players. The whole league was made up of American players, and I just felt there was an opportunity that I couldn't turn down. And as it as it turned out, I coached in Israel, a team called the Israel Sabras, and we won that league's championship, and it was a great opportunity for me, and then I got hired by the Pistons as an assistant the following year. Did you feel welcome coaching internationally? Um, I, felt, I felt welcome. The people in Israel were terrific to us. They just didn't think we were very good, but uh, no. And then when I went to Spain and I coached, uh, the people were wonderful. Um, and I've really enjoyed coaching overseas. It was a great experience. Now, throughout your whole career, did you prefer being a head coach or an assistant coach? Well, I, I, I really prefer, I prefer being, being a uh, head coach. Um, now in my career in the NBA, if I was going to continue in the NBA, and I hope I do, I'd like to be an assistant coach. Um, but if I went overseas to coach, I would definitely want to be a head coach. Is it true that you coached under your brother on three different teams? I've, I, I, yeah, I think I've coached, I've coached with, uh, with Larry in Philadelphia and in Detroit, four teams, uh, Indiana and Charlotte. Now, um, everyone is starting to get nervous, as we did with the NFL, about the upcoming lockout. Um, have you heard anything from the inside uh, that you could share, any speculation? Uh, first of all, I know nothing about what's going on because I'm not working for a team. And I think that we're all supposed to let the, the league run, run the lockout or run the negotiations and not comment at all. The only thing I can say is that I... I can say that I feel uh, very disappointed that there is a lockout and the two sides have to come to an agreement. Now you've been in basketball for many years. Who's the greatest player you've ever coached and uh, more recently with the Bobcats? Well the best player I ever coached um, 
One of the best players was Bob Lanier. Another one was Moses Malone. Another one was Reggie Miller. Allen Iverson. I coached Scotty Pippen in uh, in Portland. I coached uh, Rasheed Wallace, Chauncey Billups, Rip Hamilton. There, uh, there are so many, so many great players. Uh, the best player I think that I coached um, in Charlotte, I think one of them was Gerald Wallace, one of them was Raymond Felton, and one of them was Boris Diaw. Where was your favorite place to coach throughout your career? Well, I, I really love Detroit. It's where I had my, my opportunity to be an assistant coach and a head coach. And then I had an opportunity to go back there as an assistant with my brother when we won the uh, 2004 NBA championship. So I'd say that that's the, that's the most favorite place. But I've loved coaching in Puerto Rico, and I've loved, I've loved coaching in Israel. And I did a month this past year in Uruguay, which I thought was very, very, very nice. Um, the classic NBA argument, who's better, LeBron or Jordan, and why? Oh, I don't, I, I, I don't think there's any, any question that Michael Jordan is the greatest uh, NBA player ever. And nobody, has, nobody has, has won as many championships. And we'll, we'll just have to see what happens. We'll see when, what happens if LeBron wins his first. I think he's a great player, but there's no, there's no comparison between him and Jordan. Well, now the New Jersey Nets are moving to Brooklyn, your hometown, uh, soon. Would you consider coaching there? Would you like to? <laughs> if I could coach with Avery Johnson in Brooklyn, I'd, I'd love it. I'd even coach with him in Newark. <laughs> and um, God bless, you just turned 75 recently. Uh, you're still coaching, uh, especially here at camp. Um, how much longer do you think you could be doing this for? What's my life expectancy? <laughs> I'll get back to you on that one. And um, thank you so much, Herb Brown. Thank you for taking the time. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Max. Appreciate thank you. It.